Hello everyone and welcome to today's WorkSafe Month webinar, Managing the Risks of UV Exposure in the Workplace. I'm Stephanie from WorkSafe Tasmania. WorkSafe Tasmania Month is a long running initiative funded by the WorkCover Tasmania Board. Before we start, please take a moment to read the following slide about information received today. Oh, sorry, I'll go back one. To interact in today's webinar, please use the questions window on your control panel to type and submit questions for today's presenter. Questions will be collected and responded to at the end of today's presentation. Today's presentation is also being recorded and will be made available at the end of WorkSafe Tasmania Month on WorkSafe Tasmania's YouTube page. There is also a handout in your handout window in the control panel which you can now download um, for today's presentation. If you are unable to access that um, PowerPoint, at, sorry, that uh, PDF at any time during the presentation, uh, please contact WorkSafe uh, to receive a copy. It is now my pleasure to introduce your presenter today, Dr. Kate Harrison from Cancer Council Tasmania. Kate is a research officer in cancer prevention project officer at the Cancer Council of Tasmania. She leads uh, the occupational cancer portfolio. An adjunct senior researcher at the University of Tasmania and former university lecturer with a background in cancer research, Kate completed postdoctoral training in laboratories at the Murdoch Children's Research Institute and Peter McCallum Cancer Centre, followed by 12 years of uh, teaching and research in the School of Medicine. She has extensive experience in molecular basis of cancer and has published numerous peer-reviewed manuscripts on cancer epigenetics and radiotherapy response. Kate sits on the National Cancer Council committees for occupational and environmental cancers and the National Sun Smart and Early Childhood Working Group. Kate has a particular interest in science communication and reducing cancer incidents by raising awareness of cancer drivers in our environment. Welcome, Kate. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Thanks for that introduction. All right. Um, so, Stephanie, were we going to try and do the poll questions first up, or is that okay if we tear those up? Yeah, that's uh, yeah, 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 we'll, we'll do that. We'll so, kick off with this. Uh, yeah, thank you everyone for coming along today. I really appreciate your time. We're just going to start off with a bit of a poll question, so five questions, just to get a bit of a baseline about um, everyone's experience of UV in the workplace and what sort of things you've got in place in your workplace. So the first poll that has come up, have you been sunburnt or tanned at work in the past 12 months? And the responses are yes, no, or not relevant. So we'll provide a few more seconds for people to provide a response. I'll close the poll, Kate, and share those results. Mm -hmm. Lovely, thank you. All right, so that's that's interesting um, responses there. So 34% um, have said that they've been sunburnt or tanned at work in the past 12 months. So hopefully in today's presentation, we'll see how you can stop that from happening and reduce your risk of um, going forward of developing skin cancer um, from your UV exposure in your workplaces. Okay, and we'll run the next poll. So this poll is asking, how many of the sun protection measures do you use in your workplace? Uh, zero to one, two to three, four to five, or not relevant? And I'll close the poll, Kate, and share Thank those you. results. Thanks, Stephanie. Okay, so we've got a range of responses there. So around, the, so majority of people with two to three of the sun protection measures being used in your workplace, and ideally we'd like to see all five, and we'll be talking about those um, as we go through today's presentation as well. Thanks, Stephanie. We can jump on to the next question. <laughs> Okay, good. So the next poll uh, we're launching is asking, are you aware of UV safety policy in your workplace? And the responses are yes, no, or unsure. Oh, 
I'll close the poll. Thank you. Share the results. Thank you. So that's good. So about half are aware of a UV safety policy in your workplace. Um, but obviously, um, for those of you uh, who aren't, we can have a look at how easy it is to actually implement a policy um, and incorporate it into your sort of yeah, uh, risk assessments as well um, in the workplace. So that's good. Thank you. And the final poll. So the final poll, were you, sorry, were you aware of the lack of connection between temperature and UV level? And the response is yes, no, unsure. and I'll share those results. Thank you. Okay, so a, a vast majority of people are aware of the lack of connection between temperature and UV, which is really good because it is a sort of commonly held misconception or um, yeah, sort of uh, people don't, aren't realising that connection, but that's that's great if um, yeah, a lot of people are already aware of it, but we'll talk about that in today's presentation as well. <laughs> Thank you so much for running the poll, Stephanie. <laughs> um, so I'll get underway then. Thank you. Um, so as I said, thank you all for coming along this afternoon. We're going to be talking about managing the risk um, of UV exposure in outdoor workplaces. Um, but before I get started, I just want to acknowledge a few things. Um, first up is that we're going to be talking about cancer today, and that can sometimes raise um, issues or concerns for many of us who've had our lives impacted by cancer, either personally or through someone we know. Um, so if you have any issues or concerns, please call our supportive services at Cancer Council Tasmania um, on the number displayed on the screen there. So 1300 656585. Um, okay, let's see if my... Sorry, I'm just trying to progress the slide, but it's not really... Okay. Oh, there we go. Um, so the other thing I also need to point out is that um, information presented today is obviously not individual clinical advice. So if you have any concerns um, about your cancer risk, please speak to your doctor as well. And on behalf of Cancer Council Tasmania, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which we meet today and pay my respects to past uh, elders past, present and emerging and also extend that respect to uh, any other First Australians who are present here today. Okay, um, so just a bit of background on, in terms of Cancer Council Tasmania and what our key mission is, or the key purpose of Cancer Council Tasmania, essentially is to reduce the incidence and impact um, of cancer on all Tasmanians. And we do this via three sort of key strategies or approaches. The first is providing really high quality supportive care services. Um, so you might've heard of things like transport to treatment, but we also have um, incredible um, counsellors available for um, cancer patients and their families going through cancer and, and are available to um, support them through that um, cancer experience. Um, we also provide these uh, sort of cancer prevention uh, education uh, sessions. So this can range across lots of different types of messaging, but we'll talk about um, how you can reduce your cancer risk in general. And we go out to the community and talk about these things um, quite a bit. And then finally, uh, Cancer Council of Tasmania also funds um, lots of local cancer research. And we also um, provide a sort of uh, respected voice to advocate for cancer patients and their families as well. The thing about Cancer Council of Tasmania is that um, we're majorly, majorly funded by um, sort of community fundraising events and donations, and all of those um, funds that are raised in Tasmania stay in Tasmania so to contribute to all those wonderful um, services that we can provide for the Tasmanian community. Um, so in terms of cancer in Tasmania, unfortunately we know that about uh, 10 people will be diagnosed with cancer every single day. And my slides are, sorry, a bit laggy. Um, however, we do know that about one third of um, cancer diagnoses um, may actually be preventable um, by modifying certain lifestyle or um, risk factors. And those um, modifiable factors can also help to reduce your risk of developing other chronic diseases as well. 
So when we talk about cutting your cancer risk, generally when we go out in the community, we talk about eight key messages. Um, I won't go into all of them today, but we're really focusing in on um, being sun smart today and also uh, limiting those workplace exposures. And in terms of just going over what we're going to be discussing today, um, we're going to talk about um, the lack of correlation between UV radiation and temperature, which I think a lot of you already seem to be aware of, which is great. Um, but also hopefully making you aware of the need to check those UV levels every day. Um, hopefully you're aware of the, the five key sun protection measures, um, but we'll go over those in a little bit more detail and how you can implement those in your workplace. Uh, recognising the importance of policy in actually protecting the workforce from the risks of UV exposure and also being aware of some of the additional resources that we have um, available through Cancer Council Tasmania and SunSmart um, that can really help with uh, training and education in terms of your outdoor workforce and that little handout that's on the side there in the GoTo platform is available for you to have a look at some of the links and you can go through that and there's some um, great resources there that you can use for um, workplace training. So how big is the problem? I think a lot of people are surprised when they find out that skin cancer is actually the most common occupational cancer. So it's estimated that every year in Australia, there are about 200 cases of melanoma and 34,000 cases of non-melanoma skin cancers that can be attributed to those outdoor exposures because there is such a, you know, a high UV risk when you're working outside every day and that risk adds up over time, unfortunately. Australia has some of the highest rates of skin cancer in the world, so it's estimated that about two in every three Australians before they're age 70 uh, will actually go on to develop skin cancer. So it's a really big problem uh, that hopefully people can take seriously in their workplace and make sure that they're minimising the risk of developing skin cancer later in life. So I just want to show some representative images of what skin cancers can look like. These are um, so it's important to note that skin cancers come in all different shapes and sizes. So if you have a spot that you're concerned about, please see your doctor. But these are just some sort of example pictures. So the first one um, you may have heard of, these are called basal cell carcinomas. These are actually the, by far and away the most common type of skin cancer that's diagnosed. Um, they usually are slower growing and less likely to spread, but um, it's still important to catch these early and, and be aware of any changes that occur on your skin. Another type of uh, skin cancer that you may have heard of or uh, may not have heard of, it's the squamous cell carcinomas. These um, are usually found in areas that are exposed to the sun a lot, so often found on the head and neck. Um, and again, they, they don't tend to be as um, invasive and spreading as the next type melanoma, but they can still be a, a really um, cause for concern. So making sure you catch those early as well. And you may have heard of yeah, melanomas. These are the deadliest in terms of a, a sort of skin cancer diagnosis because of their sort of uh, ability to spread to distant organs. Um, and they are, yeah, sort of the ones that um, people probably, um, yeah, unfortunately, if, if it's not caught early, these are the ones that are likely to metastasize and spread um, quite frequently. And so, we often, because skin cancer is so common, when we talk about the rates of different cancers in um, any sort of statistics in terms of Australian or, or Tasmanian data, we actually say, um, you know, prostate cancer is the most common cancer in Tasmanian men, excluding non-melanoma skin cancers, because these skin cancers are just so common um, that, you know, the numbers are just really hard to keep track of and there are many diagnoses each year. So really important to be aware of any changes in your skin, um, keeping track of those and making sure those changes are picked up early. And we'll talk about how some of those changes you'll be looking for as well. Um, in terms of what's causing skin cancer, skin cancer is this abnormal growth of your um, of, of skin cells. Um, it's caused by UV, exposure to UV ultraviolet radiation. And so ultraviolet radiation has the ability to damage your skin cells or the DNA within those skin cells. Um, and over time that can accumulate and lead to development of skin cancer. So Cancer Council Tasmania recommends that if um, the UV level is over three, um, which there's my animation, oh, I'm going back. Um, over three, typically what we recommend is that if the UV level is over three, we have this UV index that ranges from one all the way to 11 and above. Um, if the UV index is over three, it's recommended that you use sun protection measures. However, if you're an outdoor worker, you actually need to be using sun protection measures um, all year round, regardless of the UV level, because of that cumulative exposure and risk as well. 
So how do you keep track of those UV levels? Um, hopefully some of you might have heard of the uh, SunSmart Global UV app. It's a really great resource you can have on your phone and check when the best um, times for sun protection are in your local area. Um, so it's a really handy um, resource to have an app on your phone. Um, in terms of factors that affect UV, there are a variety of contributing sort of uh, factors that will then increase or decrease sort of UV levels throughout um, uh, the day. So the first thing is the time of day. UV levels typically peak um, in the middle of the day. Um, so that app is really good at showing you exactly when and, and the range of, of when you need to be using sun protection. Another factor is the time of year. So in Tasmania, um, our average UV levels will be three and above from the beginning of September to the end of April. Um, and again, that's when we typically recommend using sun protection. But again, if you're an outdoor worker, you need to be mindful of using your sun protection year round because of that increased exposure risk. Um, so cloud cover is a tricky one because it can be a bit deceiving. So UV can actually still be fairly high on a cloudy day. So again, having that app is really handy to make sure that you know what the UV level is on a particular day. So just because it's cloudy doesn't mean that you don't have a risk of getting um, burnt or having your skin get damaged. Um, reflectivity, so the different surfaces that you might be working on, whether you're out on the water, the snow, um, or working with building materials or on building sites where there's some materials that are actually reflecting the UV um, towards your skin as well. So being mindful of that. Uh, closely you are to the equator is going to affect, um, that's going to have higher exposure to or higher UV levels. And the same with altitude, the higher the altitude, you can also have increased uh, UV exposure at higher altitudes. So it was good to see that a lot of people were aware of the lack of correlation between UV and heat, but just have a little uh, look at it again. This is a little schematic or graph here. You can see that we have on the x-axis, we've got time, and on the y, we've got temperature on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, we've got the UV level. So let's just have a look at temperature throughout the day. This is going to be the green line tracking across here. If it, There we go. Um, so temperature you can see sort of peaking in this example later in the day, but then when we have a look at the UV levels across this particular day, um, what we actually see is that we get this little orange line or red line here that's um, peaking around the middle of the day. And as I said, what we recommend is that UV or, or sun protection measures are used when the UV is above three. So if we just track across from the level three UV index here, you'd see that really what you'd want to be using is having sun protection in these times where the UV level is above three. So the little um, peak on the graph above that, that line there. So we'd be wanting to use sun protection on these days between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. in this example. And that can be quite deceptive because it's hotter a bit later on in the day, but that's actually the UV started to dissipate and, and reduce over that time. So again, that app is really handy to be able to tell you when you need to be using that protection. Okay, so Stephanie, I might play the first video. Should I see how that works? This is sort of just to show you that, um, yeah, outdoor workers unfortunately are exposed to five to 10 times um, the solar UV radiation um, to an indoor worker. And so that risk um, and that exposure is cumulative and it builds up over time. So anytime you're out unprotected in the sun, there's a risk of damage and increasing over time. So thanks, Stephanie, if we can get the video, or should I try the video? Uh, yes, or I can play it in the background. Okay, I'll see see if it works for me. I'm not sure the volumes. Right, so that video, sorry if the audio wasn't great on it. Um, the video is essentially showing that anytime you have um, skin exposed um, to UV, um, that damage accumulates over time. So it doesn't get repaired and, um, you know, it, it's all good after that. It's essentially over time, the more exposures you have, unfortunately, the greater the risk then going on to develop um, skin cancer. So we need to be really mindful of how we can protect our skin um, when we're in the workplace and working outdoors. So I'll try and. Go to the next one. Sorry. 
Pretty good. Um, and so this is a picture that's quite um, confronting as well. So this is a picture of a truck driver who actually um, drove for about 15 years with the sun just on one side of his face. And you can clearly tell which side of the face the, the sun exposure was. And so over time, um, so not only are you risking like sunburn and skin cancer, but there's obviously the effects here of photo aging. So getting damage to um, those deeper skin layers and we get those signs of, of wrinkles and, and skin damage occurring there. So again, being mindful, even if you're behind glass, um, you can still get that, that damage as well. So being aware that you need sun protection sometimes, even in a, um, a setting where you're driving a lot. So in terms of work health and safety, um, UV risk needs to be considered, um, you know, as a, a significant priority because it's such a, um, you know, huge burden in terms of, um, you know, personal costs and the health of individuals. And there's obviously, you're probably used to seeing, you know, around building sites, you know, the signs for PPE where people are wearing hard hats or high vis vests and safety goggles. But equally important is um, personal protective equipment um, for reducing your risk of um, UV damage to your skin. So um, the safety measures are really simple and straightforward. It's as simple as slip, slop, slap, seek and slide, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, but it just needs to be really um, taken seriously by, by workplaces because um, under work, um, the Work Health and Safety Act, um, employees and employers are responsible for um, you know, preventing illness and injury at work. And this is a, a big step in preventing uh, skin cancers down the track. Um, the other th important thing to note is also that um, in terms of PPE and, and these sun protective measures, um, they're also tax deductible. So people can also um, use that if you're an outdoor worker to um, make tax deductions as well. Um, so as I said, so employers are responsible for um, providing protective equipment, but also providing um, a, an environment and also training um, and adequate supervision to make sure that the cancer risk, uh, skin cancer risk is, is reduced in the workplace. Um, and on the other side of that, the employees are then responsible for complying with those work safe standards and procedures, but also ensuring your safety and the safety of those around you as well. So I think we've just got another, one more short video. So hopefully um, this one, I'm not sure if the audio, whether I can fix it on my side, it was a bit, was it quiet for everyone else? I'm not sure. Um, but the next little video is just to show how simple it is to implement some of these um, sun protection measures in the workplace. And if we think about the hierarchy of controls, obviously we can't um, eliminate or substitute the sun, but there are certain other measures that we can use to make sure that employees um, are minimizing their risk of the, the UV exposure. So if we can play video two, Stephanie, or should I try and do it on this one? Let's we'll see if it. So sorry if the audio was a bit uh, sketchy on that one as well, um, but it, it just shows how easy it is um, to actually, well, I'll just try and get off that, um, how easy it is to actually protect yourself at work. And as, as the video said, it's as easy as slip, slop, slap, seek and slide. And so we'll go through these in a, a little bit of detail now. The first and the best way to protect your skin is by wearing sun protective clothing. So these are obviously long sleeved shirts, longer style, pants um, but we also recommend that you look for the swing label that has this um, particular logo on it these have what's called a UPF or a UV protection factor um, a rating on them and we recommend ideally probably 50 plus would be the best if you're looking for work clothing um, to give you the best protective um, or the best sun protection or UV protection um, so shirts with a, a collar are really great because then you're minimizing your, the exposure of your neck but also those longer um, sleeve shirts as well. And the next 
strategy we use is slopping on some sunscreen. And so this we recommend is a broad spectrum sunscreen. So that means it um, protects you from UVA and UVB rays um, and also a water resistant sunscreen. So obviously if you're being exposed to water, but also yeah, it, it lasts a little bit longer. Um, it's recommended that you apply that 20 minutes before heading out um, outdoors and then reapply that every two hours, unless you're um, sweating or you've um, sort of uh, been exposed to water, then you need to reapply it more frequently. Um, if you were doing a full body application, um, it would actually take about 35 mils to cover um, the whole body. So it's usually recommended a teaspoon for your face um, and a teaspoon for every single limb and for your front and your back. Um, but obviously the best strategy is um, to minimise the need for sunscreen is to actually use uh, your sun protective clothing and then you only need to be applying sunscreen to those sun exposed areas such as your face and hands if you're using sun protective clothing. So it really should be that sort of last line of defence um, for using sunscreen. And the next one we have is slapping on a hat and not just any old hat. So unfortunately, baseball caps are no good because they don't actually cover enough of your face and neck and ears. So what we recommend are the um, broad rimmed bucket style Legionnaires hats or if you've got a hard hat on, if you've got one of those attachments to actually clip on some extra sun protection. Um, that way you're covering as much of your um, exposed skin as possible. The other strategy that's really important is seeking shade when you can. And so if, if you can track the shade at your work site throughout the day um, or trying to you know, plan your day a little bit so that maybe you're avoiding those peak UV times, that's another really great strategy as well. And also using sunglasses is really important because unfortunately UV light can actually really damage our um, eyes and it can contribute to the formation of cataracts. So the sorts of sunglasses that are recommended are polarised, they're close fitting, um, they cover as much as the eye area as possible and they meet the Australian um, standards as well. So they're the sort of five um, sun protection measures that are recommended and they're very straightforward and simple. Um, and then on top of that, using the, the SunSmart Global UV app. So then you can keep track of those local UV um, times as well um, and when to be using your, your sun protection. Um, so clearly UV protection at work needs to be taken seriously and using those protective measures is great, but we also need to be keeping in mind um, that there are other ways we can also add to that um, safety culture in an outdoor door workplace. Um, and one of the best ways to do this is have to have a UV um, safety policy for your workplace. And they could either be a standalone policy or it can be incorporated into a, an existing sort of safety policy. Um, they're really simple and straightforward. This is a sample one. Um, it's like literally two pages long outlining essentially those five sun protection measures and some recommendations about timing your work day. Um, and they're very simple to implement. And if your workplace is interested in, doesn't have one um, or um, would like Cancer Council to review one or help you sort of develop one, we are happy to um, yeah, assist you in that process. So get in touch with the cancer prevention team and we can um, help out with that. But it's a really straightforward, simple process and um, doesn't take much time at all. Um, the other really important thing is obviously education and training. So raising awareness among your workforce, ensuring that um, you know, it, it workers that know that there is a risk associated with that cumulative, like prolonged exposure to UV. Um, and so there are some great resources that you can access for some induction if you're interested or training for your workforce. Um, there's Cancer Council Australia has the Sun Smart Tradies Toolkit, um, which is an online resource with a, a, a bunch of uh, documents and resources that you can use. Um, and recently, Cancer Council Tasmania has developed uh, Sun Smart in the Workplace. We've got a, um, an online learning module. Um, which has some sort of quiz questions that go through it and um, a narrated presentation as well. So um, if you're interested in any of those, again, they're in that handout that um, uh, is available um, in the GoTo panel. Um, so before I finish up, I just want to highlight that obviously the protective measures are really important, but it's also really important to, um, you know, find cancer early. And so being aware of your skin and any changes in your skin is really critical in terms of um, outcomes for if you have developed skin cancer. So what the sort of things people should be looking for is any change in shape, if there's a lack of symmetry in a particular spot on your skin, an increase in size, a change in colour, or a development of a new spot. If you're concerned, you need to go and see your, your doctor about that. But finding it early means you have a better um, treatment outcome um, and 
much greater chance of success. And the other important thing to note is that really we should be ideally doing regular self skin checks and also seeing um, or getting a professional skin check um, annually, especially if you're working outdoors um, and making sure that you're aware of any of those changes very early on. So what are the key takeaways for today? So clearly it's all about slip, slop, slap, seek and slide, but it's just really about implementing it in the workplace because it seems so simple. And unfortunately, I think a, a few workplaces don't uh, realise or they ignore the, the real risks um, that can be associated with that long-term uh, outdoor worker exposure to UV. Um, so really recommend that global UV SunSmart app because it really helps you identify when you should be using your sun protection. But as I said, outdoor workers need to be using it year round regardless of whether that UV level is above three or not. Um, so think UV, not heat. So UV and temperature are not correlated. So that's where um, a misconception is often people think they can feel themselves getting burnt when you, you really can't. Um, so it's just being sun smart um, yeah, all year round essentially. Um, and just keeping track on any changes or signs that potentially your skin may have changed uh, and getting to see your doctor as soon as you have any um, concerns and making sure that you have a regular checkup um, as well as that. So the other thing is that Cancer Council offers um, a corporate discount of 20% off your order when you spend over $100. Um, so you can get those discounts on, on sunscreen. Um, so that's another handy sort of thing to, to be aware of. And just to finish up, if you'd like any more information, just visit our website. We've got heaps of great resources and links on there. Um, call us um, on 1300 65 and please email us at prevention at cancertas.org.au if you're interested, particularly in, um, yeah, if you'd like to implement a, a UV safety policy in your workplace and would like some advice or guidance on that, we're happy to help. Um, thank you for all coming along and yeah, thanks, Stephanie. And uh, thank you to Dr. Kate Harrison for her uh, webinar presentation today, Managing UV Risk in the Workplace. Uh, so if anyone does have any questions uh, for Kate today, please use the questions window on your control panel um, to type and submit those questions. And today's presentation was part of WorkSafe Tasmania Month. Please head to worksafe.tas.gov.au to see what other online and in-person events we are running right up until the end of October this month. Uh, Kate, what advice uh, can you um, provide people who rely on or uh, see that uh, simple um, uh, foundation can be a, a UV protection? Uh, so, so what's the question? Uh, if a simple foundation for UV protection or Yes, yeah, so so uh, people who who use foundation, um, oh, they, yes. some some of them provide a, and and uh, have have an S SPF. Um, yeah, how 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 what's the um, use of uh, sunscreen still? Yeah, so that's interesting. So um, a lot of them unfortunately are below SPF fifty, which isn't sort of ideal, but they still offer some sun protection. And you'd still, if you were out for prolonged periods, you'd need to be reapplying um, every couple of hours um, to make sure that you're not sort of losing that sun protection. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, does working under glass or plastic hot houses uh, make a difference to UV levels? Um, so I'm not sure of like the exact differences, but as you saw with that picture of the, the truck driver with the damage on one side of his face, it's definitely it, UV does penetrate and it, it does get through. So um, you'd certainly want to be very mindful of that and making sure that you are using um, yeah, some protection measures in those sort of instances, I would, I would recommend. Uh, is it a UV level above? Above three, and I think I've got it got it correct where the arrow is yep. pointing uh, yep. that way. Um, is quite low to to think of having measures. Um, so a UV level of three being low to use some protection measures. Um, so I guess it's just evidence indicates that that's when damage to our skin cells starts to occur. So that's when we need to be um, aware or mindful of that. So it's I think we look at it as being that for general recommendation or general population is um, the UV average is three and above from September to April and that's when 
you should be using those sun protection measures. But as I said, um, because of that cumulative exposure over time and outdoor workers having five to 10 times the UV exposure, um, they need to be mindful of that and using that sun protection year round because you're just getting that sort of constant exposure, unlike a sort of, you know, office worker who's, yeah, not getting out in the UV as much. Thanks. What does the SPF equate to in time for acceptable dose? Um, it used to be based on 12 minutes. Is that still the case? Uh, so uh, I'm not too sure. So the questions say SPF 12 minutes. Uh... Yes. Yeah, so, so what 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 does the SPF equate to in time for mm. acceptable dose? It used to be based on 12 minutes. Is that right. still the case? Uh, so I'm just aware that, so the SPF is based on um, the protective factor that it's providing to your skin. So an SPF 50 plus is basically only allowing one in 50, one fiftieth of the UV levels to reach your skin. Uh, but I'm not sure about timing wise. I think there's still, if you use a SPF 30 or an SPF 50, they still recommend two hours reapplication. Um, I'm not sure about the 12 minute thing. You'll have to look at that, yeah. Thanks. For outdoor workers who need to wear uh, goggles to protect their eyes while they're working, um, mm. what advice can you provide in respect to protecting their eyes from, from the sun? Yeah, absolutely. So that would be a slightly difficult situation. I'm hoping that in certain situations they would have goggles that have been specifically designed that can be used to um, provide you some sun protection, but also the, the safety purpose as well. So I'm not sure if that's um, out there or how expensive that option is, um, but that would be the sort of ideal situation to make sure that you've still got that sort of level of safety, but also minimising that exposure. But again, if it's, I mean, if it's something that's, you're not outside constantly and it's just a shorter exposure and you can't find, you can't really be putting sunglasses over the top of safety goggles. Um, so hopefully there are um, options out there that, that do both. Um, but if not, then I think you'd maybe want to be timing it so that you are maybe not out at the peak of UV times and you do that sort of work um, when the UV levels are a bit lower. Um, sort of in the earlier in the morning or later in the day. Thanks. Thank you. There's still time to ask Dr. Kate Harrison from Cancer Council Tasmania any questions uh, that you have around uh, sun protection. Today's webinar is also being recorded and will be made available on WorkSafe Tasmania's YouTube, YouTube page at the end of WorkSafe uh, month. And the PDF is also there for you to download, uh, which is sitting in your handouts um, window in the control panel. With no further questions coming through, Kate, are there any uh, final key messages that uh, you would leave, like to leave the audience with? Um, no, I just I think the the main take homes I think were the importance of having a, a policy, a UV safety policy in your workplace, and how that um, yeah, Cancer Council Tasmania is more than happy to help and assist in that process. So please yeah, email us on that email address on the screen right now. Um, and that it's, it's a really simple, straightforward process because it is just essentially slip, slop, slap, seek and slide, um, which is, um, you know, it, but it's, it's fostering that really healthy safety culture in your workplace and um, being aware that skin cancer is so common uh, that we have to do everything that we can to make sure we, we bring down these rates because, as I said, Australia is a world leader in um, terms of the rates of skin cancer, unfortunately. So, um, and if you're an outdoor worker, that risk um, increases um, dramatically as well. So, just yeah, making sure it's a priority for yeah, health, health and safety of the workers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just before we do go, Kate, uh, do you have any resources or advice for encouraging um, the older workforce to use some protection measures? Oh, the older workforce. Um, so I, I just recommend the general ones that we've got. So some of those um, links in the handout, the um, SunSmart um, narrated presentations and outdoor worker presentations. Um, I think they're just um, 
a good reminder for everyone about you know, the risks and how we reduce those risks in a really simple, straightforward manner. Yeah. And then finally, uh, normal long sleeve clothes, uh, do they help yes. in the protection of UV? Yes, they do. Um, however, I wouldn't, you don't know um, in terms of what their UV protection factor is. And sometimes they actually can let it quite a bit through, especially if they've been stretched or they've got sort of a um, light weave fabric, some of them can actually let a, a little bit through. So um, it's probably best if you if you can to try and source those ones that have those um, UPF swing tags on them to make sure you've got a, a better level of protection. All right, thanks Kate. So thank you today to our presenter, Dr. Kate Harrison from Cancer Council Tasmania for her presentation, Managing the Risks of UV Exposure in the Workplace. Cancer Council details are there on the screen if you would like to uh, contact the Cancer Council Tasmania for further information. Today's webinar has also been part, run part of WorkSafe Tasmania Month. Please head to worksafe.tas.gov.au to find out what other online and in-person events we are running throughout the month of October. WorkSafe Month is an initiative funded by the Work Cover Tasmania Board. Thank you to our presenter, uh, Dr. Kate Harrison from Cancer Council Tasmania, and thank you to everyone for attending. Thank you.